All right, so um, these videos, uh, well, th this video is going to cover my um, document, the Python array, or Python list activity one, and then list activity two, and then I'll make a second video that goes through um, list multiple choice questions and just, you know, some basic list programs. Um, Lists in you know the languages I've I've uh, taught more. Um, they're called arrays in like Java or um, uh, C C plus uh, plus, but they just call them lists, which is cool because in Java you've got like array lists and arrays that are all separate. They're all just lists in uh, Python. And what makes it cool is there's a bunch of uh, functions that you can call to make things really easy on you. So um, let's do this. First things with a list. Let's do a sketch screen. So let's assume this is our list. We've got 17, 8, 1, 13, so on. So similar to how we dealt with strings, you've got different index positions. And I'm writing the index down. Okay. So define and assign your array. Uh, I should say list. I need to change some of this stuff. Um, with the numbers you put in each box. <coughs> so you could call it numbers. And that equals, you know, 17, 8, 1, 13, 4, 9, 10, 3, and 12. Notice I'm using the square brackets around it. Okay. What is the length? Well, length is we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Again, we go back to this uh, length function where you just pass in the list and it's going to give you the value of nine. That's important um, uh, because then you, we, can, we can run through these with loops. Okay. So, what is the index? and value of the first element in numbers, uh, the index is equal to zero and its value is equal to 17. <coughs> what is the index and value of the last element and its uh, index is eight and its value is equal to 12. Okay. Um, need to move down. Do these other questions. Okay. Um, what is the relationship between the length of your array and the index of the last element? Okay, that's easy because we've done this with strings. So it's just uh, len numbers. So that would give us nine, right? And we just subtract one from it. Uh, seven says write a loop that adds all the elements in your array and stores them in a variable called total. All right, so I'm going to do, there's two ways to do this. There's an easy way and there's a more difficult way, a more traditional way. I'll do the traditional way first and then I'm going to show you uh, how nice it is. Uh, what Python's done, okay? So um, the traditional way you'd say i equals zero total uh, equals zero, and then Python has the while loop, so you could say while um, i is less than the length of numbers. Um, okay, and so then I just say total uh, equals total plus numbers at position i. i. Um, and so i is zero at first, zero is less than, and this is nine, so zero is less than nine, so we go to whatever's in position zero, which I think was 17. I'd have to scroll up, which means I have to take the screen, sketch screen off. So um, I think it's 17. Anyway, so if this is if this is 17, which stored in position zero, it's 17 plus total, which is zero, and then so zero plus 17 is total. Total is now 17. Okay. 
Then we have to add one to i to go to the next uh, index position. So you'd say i equals i plus one. Okay. And so i is uh, zero. Zero plus one is so i would be one after the first time around. <coughs> Um, then you go up, is 1 less than or equal to 17? I think the next value, uh, uh, so that would be true. So the next value of i, so now we're at position 1. This, so the next value is, I think, 8. Okay. So 17 plus 8, um, what does that give us? 25. So now total is 25. And so it's just keeping a running total. Uh, i is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. So now I is 2. And so it does this over and over again. And so at the end, you'd want to print the total. Okay. And this stuff obviously wouldn't exist, but that's just for demonstration purposes. All right. So that's the more traditional way. And what you would see in um, something like that would be very similar to what you'd see in like C++ or Java. But with list, it's really cool. So let me... Uh, um, let me trash this and let's look at it the easy way. So um, we can do for i in range. Ooh, we got a range function. Range len numbers. Okay. Now all we have to do is just say total. Uh, equals total plus numbers position I okay and then you would just say print uh, print total okay what's nice about this is now that we have we start with as long as I is in the range and the range met our function is just going to run through every single every single uh, uh, index position in um, here, okay? Um, it's just gonna add them all up and then print it. And what's nice is when you're using like while loops, you can, if you, if you <coughs> aren't using them properly, <coughs> your index can get outside, meaning out of bounds of your of your list um, with this it's gonna run through just every single one and there's not gonna be any errors uh, you know if you forget to do like I equals I plus one at the end um, you have an error now these are like easy errors for programmers to fix but this makes it nice you're not having to type as much in programmers like things being efficient so um, I'm gonna close this move on See here, seven. Ray loop to display the array backwards. We got another cool thing with this. So uh, I'll do the traditional way and then the uh, easier way. So we could say i equals len numbers minus one. So that would give us eight because there's nine and eight's the last position. So we would say while. Sorry about my handwriting as well. While i is greater than or equal to zero, um, print uh, numbers and we'll do like an end uh, equal to a blank here. And then we'd have to say i equals i minus one, okay? So again, not too difficult, but there's you know four lines of code there. Um, the easier way we can do it in two. Okay. So again, this isn't very difficult. What it's doing, i is eight, a is greater than zero. Print what's in position eight, and then and then put a blank space in between it. Uh, eight minus one is now seven, and then so seven is greater than or equal to zero. So then we print what's in position seven, so forth. Okay. So um, now again, you could screw this up. Like let's say you forgot to put this in and it was just i is greater than zero. Would you print what's in position zero? Nope. 
So again, this range stuff that we're going to use gets rid of that kind of uh, issue. All right. So do it, and this will be in two lines. So for i uh, in reversed. Okay, range. Len numbers. I'm gonna run out of space. Numbers. Okay, and I need one, two more, and then my semicolons. Hopefully, you guys can see the semicolons still. So basically, we've got a range. It's gonna run through everything in uh, the numbers. Uh, list and then once we get it we reverse it okay and so that's really nice um, let me get rid of that okay so now I can say print print numbers at position I and then put in an end equals blank okay so two lines of code did just what we did and um, works real well is real clean efficient code um, so okay I'm gonna close this again let's go down to nine what does it say write a loop that adds up all the elements in your array and stores them in a variable called total skip elements that are larger than ten okay so um, I'm just going to do the efficient way in the way that you're supposed to do it. Uh, I've got, because these videos are, you know, fairly long. I'm making them. They're about a half hour long each. So um, I showed you how to do the while loop with both of them, and there's answers at the bottom of this document that you guys can look at. So I'm just going to do, um, like I said, I'm just going to do the efficient way from doing it uh, from here on out. So, um you know sorry let me read this again write a loop that adds up all the elements in your array and this should say list nah. let's get screen let's just say list and stores them in a variable called total so total at first would be equal to zero there's our um, skip elements that are greater than or larger than 10 Okay, so this is easy too. So you do your for loop for um, i, whoops, yeah, I want that. For i in range uh, len numbers, okay, so if numbers at position i is less than 10 okay uh, then we do total equals total plus numbers at i okay and at the end we would do a print total to test it now I know there were some numbers definitely um, numbers that were great or were not less than 10 so it would not it would skip it okay so you're running through here uh, I is 0 at first so z it, position 0 I think it was 17 in position 0 so it would is 17 less than 10 nope so it goes back up I becomes 1 is uh, what's that position 1 less than 17 I think it's 8 um, so then you'd have in position one right here numbers is eight so eight plus zero is now a total of zero and you just run through that and uh, again type this stuff out programming is kinda real hands-on and so uh, you can watch what I'm doing but you're not gonna get um, you know I don't think you're gonna really learn until you start typing this stuff out and seeing how it all works and all that so Okay, that's nine. Let's see, ten. It says calculate the average of your elements and store it in a variable called average. Okay, so whenever you're dealing with numbers, you know you always want to. People always want to figure out totals of data. They want to figure out averages of data. Uh, you know, mean, median, and mode type stuff. 
Um, so uh, let's see here. So total, again, total would equal zero. And so we can do this again. We could say four pi in range. Okay, and we need the total again. Total equals total plus numbers i. So I want to make that more square so you guys aren't putting in parentheses there. Totals at i, and then we probably need an average up here. Average equals zero. Okay, so then. Uh, once our total gets added up, our average is equal to the uh, total divided by the length of the numbers. Um, the numbers list. So there's nine in there. So whatever our total is divided by nine would give us our average. And then you can just do a simple print average and then test it on your own, plug in your guys' own numbers and see if it works properly how you want it to work. Okay, so that's this document. And again, um, all the information's down here. Uh, you know, even if you wanna copy and paste and see how it works, that's a good idea. Um, after watching this, if you got kind of a handle on it, it might be a good idea to just try it on your own. Um, and then you can check your work if you got errors or whatever and see what you're doing wrong. Look at my answers. But um, this is the kind of bread and butter programs that are going to get you guys good at programming. You're not going to get good at programming by reading code or, um, you know, listening to my videos. You have to be, you know, in the code and... Uh, you know getting upset when it doesn't work it's funny I tell my high school kids get mad at the code get mad at the code because um, you know it's really really frustrating in, in programming when it doesn't work and so um, once you figure it out you really remember uh, you know how to fix what your problem was and you don't make this same mistake again all right so um, <coughs> <clears throat> this is my second list activity, and I tried to do something with, or you know, a few years back uh, with uh, fantasy football, okay? Because I was becoming big. Um, it's funny we actually had ex students that that ended up winning, you know, one of the big fantasy football uh, leagues, and uh, they won like they won over a million dollars. Um, and uh, last I heard was that they bought a warehouse and were had an all full of cryptocurrency mining rigs. Um, so anyway, uh, fantasy football, um, you got your different quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, and defenses. Okay, um, and so you're building your you're building your team based off of the available players. Now, you know this might be this this. Uh, might be outdated, but the idea is that you know you kind of get what I'm you know I'm trying to do. So it says create a list called Sealy's Picks and add to your list one quarterback, one running back, one right wide receiver, and one tight end. The nice thing about this is that we can add and and remove and insert information into our lists, which makes them dynamic. Okay, if you're working with Java or C plus plus, your arrays are not dynamic. Once they're set with the number of items in there, uh, you, you can't change the number of items that are in there. You can change the values, um, but you can't change what's in there. Um, in order to do that, you have to create, at least in Java, you have to create an array list. And so, um, you know, Python's nice in that you don't have to go out of your way and create all sorts of other different things, all right? So um, let's initialize our list. We'll say, Ah, whoops, I need to put on the sketch screen. Let's say um, for Sealy's picks, 
Um, I start off and I've got in there Andrew Luck. Okay. Now if I want to add to it, I can say C. Lee's uh, picks dot append. Uh, and I want to do a running back, so that be La, uh, Le'Veon Bell. Okay, and sorry again, my my handwriting. This is just ridiculously bad, but it's hard to write with this pen. Okay, uh, and so the, what the append uh, uh, what what the append um, function does. Sorry, and these are not those are parentheses. I apologize. That's a parentheses. This is a square, you know, brace, okay? These are parentheses. So what it does is it appends Le'Veon Bell to the end of my uh, Seeley's Picks uh, function. So I can then say Seeley's Picks dot append. I think I need a tight end or a wide receiver. So I'll say Larry... Uh, Fitz, I don't know, Larry Fitz, it's, it's Fitzgerald, but whatever. Uh, and then I need a tight end, so I'll say Seeley's picks dot append. And I'll say Jimmy. Okay, so that, that creates, this creates my Seeley's picks. And then these three appends and adds information on to the end, okay? So two, it says write a statement to determine the length. Okay, so that's easy again, len. Okay, this len uh, function you're going to get used to. And that would return four, right? One, two, three, four. <coughs> three. Uh, since defenses win championships, oh yeah, this is the year I actually, the Broncos actually won the, the Super Bowl. It says, since defenses win championships, write a statement to add a defense to the front of your list. So now I don't want to append it to the end of my list. I want to insert it to the beginning of my list. So Seeley's picks, and at the very, uh, whoops, Seeley's picks. <coughs> dot insert and so at position zero which is the very beginning of any list uh, I want to put in Denver Broncos so I'm a Broncos fan okay <coughs> I'm sorry this looks bad I ran out of space anyway you get the idea insert inserts and you can insert into the uh, index position that you want Okay, that's one through three. Four, it says write the statement to determine the position of the last element of your list. <coughs> so the last position, I mean, you know, here you go again. Len, Seeley's picks. So right now I think it would return uh, five, right? You know, but we start counting, we start at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, that's five. So we need to get minus five minus one to give our last index position, which is four in this case. Okay. Five, write a for loop and while loop to display each element in your list. So again, the while loop, uh, shoot. I equals zero. That should go there. So while uh, I is less than the length of Seeley's picks. Okay, then we need to print Seeley's. <coughs> Seeley's picks. I'll just put a, a comma in between them. Okay. 
and then i equals i plus one. So this is the way that, you know, the more traditional way, but that's four lines of code, we can clean that up into two. Um, come on now. Sorry about this eraser works okay, but it's not wonderful. All right, so um, you know to write the for loop for i in range, and then we got len so this picks. We can do a print uh, C Lee's picks at position I Okay. Okay, that's pretty easy. God, that's a bad R. <coughs> so add another quarterback tight end. <coughs> wide receiver defense now this is getting to be a bit repetitive I mean I'm gonna do it but um, you know I could do C Lee's picks dot append yeah I'll put in um, Brady uh, Adrian um. So this picks dot and Okay, write a for loop to display your list backwards. So remember the reverse. So for i in reversed reverse function, and then we got to give it the range when and semicolons. Well, semicolons go with that. Okay. <laughs> then we can just do a print. And then it prints it backwards. Which is nice. Okay. So you guys should be good with append. You should be good with reversed. Uh, and insert above. Now I'm going to do a couple new ones. Let's go down a little bit. Eight. Um... Eight says, uh, you find that one of your wide receivers is hurt. Remove the wide receiver from your list and insert a new wide receiver. Make sure that, so now, <coughs> so now we want to remove a wide receiver. So this is really helpful too. So we could say Sealy's picks dot remove. And we can remove, I think that was Randall Cobb. Okay, and then we can write after it, Sealy's picks. So instead of having Randall Cobb in there, uh, we can insert uh, into uh, position seven where Randall Cobb was, we can put in Calvin Johnson. Okay, so we'll remove Randall Cobb, add in Calvin Johnson with the insert. 
Okay. So remove and insert. Those are both good ones. So nine, we can only have one defense, so I'm going to see these picks. And I'm going to remove Seattle. Again, I'm a Broncos fan. All right, uh, last one for this. 10. And again, the answers are all down here. So, um, you, know. <coughs> you guys can practice, check your work, okay? So, uh, in this one, we are uh, write code that loops through each element in the list. If it finds Tom Brady, display boo. Else, if it finds the Denver Broncos, defense, say, or display, yeah. Okay, so uh, easy. Or I in range okay so if Okay, so go ahead, play with both of these activities, and um, I'll put up the next video on that will have multiple choice style questions, and then some more uh, written out type programs, which I'll write out with the the Jupyter notebook. Okay.